appreciate all that you do and all you will continue to do. And we salute you for taking care of the kids like they need to be taken care of and letting them know that they're going to be okay. Because a lot of them don't have homes. So I, I appreciate you and I, my hands go off to you. Thank you so much. We will now have the call of worship. And you all will stand and follow in your bulletin with me. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His faithful love shall endure forever. The stone rejected by the builder has now become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it's more for us to see. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will, we will rejoice and be glad in it. We will now have our opening song by Phaedra in the choir. Amen.
He is the arm for his wife to lean on, mourn, while he trusts in God to lead him on. A model that a daughter wants her husband to be. The man every son portrays for the world to see. The profound statue a family would love to call their own, with a loving wife and children waiting when he gets home. Amen? Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord and Master Jesus Christ, all honor and glory to your holy name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for this day we celebrate as Father's Day. Yes. And for all that you have done and will continue to do in our lives. Today, Father, I choose to ask, seek, knock at each challenge and each opportunity and accept the good that results in the lives of my brothers and sisters in faith as a joyous expression of the power and love of God. Yes. Your peace is what we desire today. May we strive together to maintain unity of the spirit in the church as well as in our daily lives. Yes, May we truly become one that we would show love and forgiveness one to another. May we rely on your Holy Spirit yes, that gives endurance encouragement, and unity. Thanks be to God. Happy Father's Day. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. I come to you today to read the scripture, which is taken from Matthew 9, 35 through 38, and Matthew 10, 1 through 8. Please stand for the word of the gospel. Oh, I'm sorry. If you're looking for it in the Red Cube Bible, it's on page 9. Matthew 9, 35, reads as, Then Jesus went out, went about all the city, and in the village, teaching in the synagogues, and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, curing every disease and sickness. When he, when he saw the crowd, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without shepherd. When he said this, when he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers in the harvest. That is Matthew 9, 35 through 38. And I'm going to read Matthew 10, 1 through 8. Then Jesus summoned his disciples and gave them authority over the unclean spirit to cast them out and to cure every disease and sickness. These are the names of the 12 disciples. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas, Matthew, the tax collector, James' son, Alphaeus, and Theodos, Simon of Canaanite, and Judea of Icarus, of the one who betrayed him. This, these twelve disciples Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go. Nowhere, sorry, go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but rather to move, rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, proclaim the good news: the kingdom of heaven has come. Cure the sick, raise the dead, clean lepers, and cast out demons. You receive without payment. Give without payment. The reading of the word. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.
God for allowing me to be here with you all this morning. And happy Father's Day to each and every father under the sound of my voice. I thank God this morning uh, for allowing me to be here. Uh, our children are here, Joy and Lisa, and um, my husband Jeffrey Graham is here. Um, I thank God for allowing me to be here and be able to still stand before you even after I took a tumble. <laughs> How great is our God <laughs> that he's, he had his angel there to catch me. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, thank you for this moment, God. And I ask right now in the mighty name of Jesus that you would have let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be accepted in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. So we know today is Father's Day, a day that we take the time to say a special thank you and show our appreciation to our fathers, whom we may call Daddy, we may call him Papa. Well, however you address your father or your father figure, Today is the day that we set aside to take that, you know, to do some extra special things for them. But we know too that statistics show that the monies we spend today on cars and flowers, restaurants and retail stores, edible arrangement store, and, and et cetera, for Father's Day, the monies that we spend does not equate to the monies we spend on Mother's Day. <laughs> it's okay though. <laughs> the restaurants are not going to be as busy today as it normally be for Father's Day. I mean for Mother's Day because you know what the dads do? They like getting in the backyard on the grill and showing us how good of a dad they are by grilling for us, right? I know that's what Jeffrey Grant loves to do. But regardless, what the statistics may show, Fathers, we love you. We appreciate you for you and all that you do for us. So don't allow the statistics to make you think or feel any other way. Know that you are appreciated. And if you are like me, whose father has passed away, you may not feel much like celebrating or doing anything today, right? Um, or maybe, you know, you may still have an earthly father, but you do not celebrate with him for whatever reason. But I stopped by today just to tell you about another father. And if you would join me in celebrating because we have a father to show love and our appreciation to today. And not only today, but every day. Every minute of the day, every second of the day, every hour of the, every breath we take, we can say, thank you, God. So our text today comes from Romans 8, verses 14 through 17, and it reads, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage, again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption, by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. So I'm going to go ahead and put this disclaimer out there and remind you that uh, Brother Graham came by last month and talked about your mama. <laughs> but today, I'm not going to talk about your mama, but I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to ask you a serious question. Do you know who your dad is? Now, I know under different conditions and circumstances, that can be an extremely insulting question to some. But I'm not asking you this question, do you know your, who your daddy is, 
in a natural sense. I'm asking you a legitimate question in the spiritual sense. All right, come on. Do you know who your father is? Or if you want to say, my dad. We know physically, every one of us have a natural father. But spiritually, I'm talking about our creator of all people and all things. My Abba Father, my God, my Lord. So I'm going to present to some, and I'm going to introduce to others who my dad is. And I'm going to ask you today, come on, will you join my family? Because it's free. And all the benefits of being my sister or my brother. Amen. Because our daddy, oh, let me tell you about our daddy. So just by chance, if you don't know who our daddy is, I want to share my daddy with you. So you too can enjoy being in his presence. Because in his presence, is full of joy. So our text today tells us how and why God is our Father. And there are three points I want to lift up uh, from our text. The words led, received, and cry out. Those of us who are born again believers are children of God. God is your Father. You do not need Mari Povich or some DNA test to prove to you who your daddy is. It's right here in our text. God is your father. For we entered the family of God by faith. And therefore, we have God as our father. Our text tells us we were born into God's family as children and adopted as sons and daughters. We know the legal term of adoption is an act where one takes a child that belongs to another and makes them their own, gives that child the same provisions and privilege as if that child was born naturally in their family. They take that child and, and you know, they raise them, care for them, love them as if they were their own natural flesh and blood. My mama used to say, feed them till they look like you. <laughs> they even give that child their name and even an inheritance. But one thing when you adopt a child that you cannot physically give to that child is your nature. Like you can with your own flesh and blood. But the adoption here in our text is a spiritual adoption. Where we are placed automatically into the family of God immediately after just being born. And I'm talking about born again. Because the word tells us if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. And once we are a new person in Christ, we take Christ's nature. Now you can't do that if you adopt me. But when we are adopted by God, we take Christ's nature and we become full-fledged children of God. We become an heir of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Which means we have inherited God's nature and are entitled to the benefits as his children. Oh my God. We inherit his name. We inherit peace. We inherit his joy. His mercy and his grace, even his forgiveness. Do you know who your daddy is? In our text, verse 14 says, For as many are as are led by the Spirit of God. These are children of God. A true born child of God is submissive to the Holy Spirit and is led by the Holy Spirit. My brothers and sisters, Please note, the Holy Spirit is in charge of our lives and can only lead you if you give the Holy Spirit permission.
your mission. When you are led by the Holy Spirit, no devil can stop you from being victorious in all that you desire to do. When you are in the family of God, you know you are in him and he is in you. When you know who you are and whose you are, then you know that you are more than a conqueror. Do you know who your daddy is now? Verse 15 tells us, for you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear. We enter the family of God by faith. And as God's children, when you know who your daddy really is, we live by faith and therefore we have no reason to fear. Fear is a sign of insecurity of not knowing who your daddy is. So how are you insecure in your life? Maybe you need to sit down and think about your daddy and the power your daddy has. For you are safe and secure in your daddy's arms. Our daddy has not given you a spirit of fear, but of love and power and a sound mind. Do you know who your daddy is? And when we look at the last portion of verse 15, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. But we cannot leave out verse 16 and 17, which confirms everything that I have said thus far. Putting the icing on the cake, it seals the deal. The spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. And that came from the New King James Version, but I want to put in your ear today. The New Living Translation confirms with us in so much more clarity of who we are. And it reads, for all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. So you have not received a spirit that makes you fearful slaves. Instead, you received God's Spirit when he adopted you as his own children. Now we are called, we call him Abba Father. For his Spirit joins our spirit to affirm that we are God's children. And since we are his children, we are his ears. In fact, together with Christ, we are ears of God's glory. But if we are to share his glory, we must also share his suffering. So my brothers and sisters, I ask you a question. Can you remember maybe falling off of your bike or, or falling or falling like I did or falling and hurting yourself and scraping your knee or something, and your daddy comes over and checks on you. Now, I do know that it's a little different with daddies, right? So daddy comes over to his male child, and he'd be like, come on, boy, you'll be all right. Get up, you all right. But when daddy come over to his, his daughters, you know, sisters, how daddy do us. Daddy will say, oh, baby, come here, and let daddy pick you up, and daddy holds us. And daddy rubs us on, on our back and says, oh, it's going to be all right. And you know how we act when we hit that ground. We haul, we cry out. We're going to cry out and say, ah, daddy, daddy is coming to our rescue. And in, in, in life, we are going to suffer sometimes. And, and, and sometimes life is going to get the best of us. And sometimes we are going to have to give up our right for somebody else's wrong. And, and we will go through some things that make us ask. Why me? And then we face hardships from time to time. It may be a season of sickness, and, or it may be a season where you face so many deaths in your family that you're asking God, why? But it, 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 it is better to face suffering and having God as your daddy, and he will make everything all right for you. When you fall, he's right there and always ready to pick you up. And all you got to do is cry out. And that's how our daddy is. He's got us. And see as I get ready to take my seat. 
Because you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord and Savior, you have been adopted by your daddy. And any time and any day or any part of the night, at the midnight hour, no matter what is happening, no matter what is going on, all you got to do is cry out, Abba, Father. Your daddy will come to your rescue. You can call on God, your daddy, when you're hungry and he will feed you. You can call on when you're weak and he will strengthen you. You can call on him when you're scared and in the presence of enemies and hell hounds may be on your track. But always remember no weapons formed against you shall ever prosper. He will prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. And when you don't know what to do and you're lost and your back is against the wall, oh God help me and chaos is all around. I'm telling you our daddy will bring you peace. I stop by to tell you and to remind you, all you got to do is cry out to our daddy. When, we, when you are sad, our daddy will give you joy. He is your father for the fatherless. He is shelter in the time of trouble. He is a bridge over troubled waters. Our daddy is our deliverer. He's our way maker. He is our Jehovah Jireh. You, you need me to tell you some more about our daddy? Or have you already said, I'm a part of the family? I know who my daddy is today. Because I'm telling you, Jehovah Shalom, he will give you peace. Yes, sir. El Shaddai, our God, is he brings the Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Who shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life, of whom I shall be afraid. Sometimes you've got to cry out and simply say, Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know. So I stop by just to remind you that our daddy is waiting on you. I don't know what you may be carrying up with, it with you today. Your heart may be feeling a little bit heavy. Your mind may be a little confused. You may be feeling a little, little down today. You don't know what's going on. And you may be getting ready to face something this week. But I stop by to tell you that our daddy, our daddy is waiting on you to cry out to him. Let him, let him hold you in the hollow of his arms. Let him soothe you. Let him bring you peace. Because there is no problem ever too big for our daddy. Do you know who your daddy is? Amen.
you didn't know who did that to me. That's all right. That's all right. Now I'm trying to figure out who's rubbing off on who. I, I kind of, I kind of think it's Leslie rubbing off on Jeffrey, rubbing off the other way around. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Amen. But again, we just want to thank you for coming. Thank you for that awesome message. God bless you. We continue to bless you. We continue to use you. Amen. Amen. Uh, do we have any announcements? Any announcements? I know I'm standing between you and Eaton, and I know you smell all that good food back there. And she's been cooking since about 7 o'clock this morning. And I can tell you, I'm not going to tell you how I know, but everything tastes good. I'm not going to tell you how I know that. But I'm telling you, everything tastes good. Amen? Uh, Jeff, you want to tell us uh, who your kids are? I'm not going to put them on the spot since you've been here before. We... Sure. Yeah. Good morning, church. Good morning. Uh, this is our daughter, Lisa. All right, Lisa. And, and Joy. Joy. Right. And, uh, and, and by the way, Pastor, the day is also Sister Graham's birthday. You kid. Oh. All right. Well, you know what we got to do. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday.
And thank you for the food that has been prepared for the nourishment of my body. For your son Jesus Christ's sake, we ask you to bless the food, bless the preparers, and bless those who are about to receive it. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. The Lord bless you. The Lord, the Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace now and forever. Amen. 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 Come on, enjoy this.